bourbon and boxing. What is up, bourbon and boxing fans, man? Welcome back. It's been over a week since you guys saw us last, man. Of course, as always, Chef Jeff with you guys and our man. Big Spade. You know Big Spade, <laughs> yeah. The Chef Jeff and Big Spade show, baby. That's what we're talking Chef about, man. Yeah, that's cool right there. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I like that. I like that. I hope I'm somebody to some shit. <laughs> you better, uh, they'll see that. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. But, uh. Everything. Man, we we missed a week with you guys, man. I went out on vacation down to Georgia to see family, all that kind of stuff. Uh, spent some time with the kids there in spring break. Let them go to the beach and all that fun shit, man. Uh, how was your week? You know, through that through that time, man. What'd you do? Just relax a little bit, or relax, grinding, grinding, relaxing, man. I fell asleep on some fights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, uh... so, from grinding so hard, so. You know how it be, man. Sometimes you yep. just, whew, it just be like, dang, I tried. I even yeah. had my look on the um, roll. I caught the Roly fight, but mm -hmm. I was still dove enough on that. The uh, went to the zoo and a friend door fought. I'm like, it's over. I tried. Yeah. Next thing I know, he waking me up. He's shaking my hand though. I'm like, what, bro? He like it's over with. I'm like, oh, but he had woke me up. He was like, oh, he, I, I seen the blood all over. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. Right. So I'm like, man, it's over with. He got him, and it, that's how. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that fight was crazy, man. I still think Tim Dazu wins that fight without that cut, man. And you the first so? two, were, man, he was countering uh, Pandora's. Uh, he broke Pandora's nose the first two rounds. I heard. I uh, heard. immediately fucked his nose up because he kept countering that jab. And Pandora didn't have any answer. The first two rounds, he was like patient. And every time he'd throw that jab, he'd counter and pow, hit him with a big fucking hit punch. So I was like, man, if that keeps going on, Pandora's not going to last, you know, 12 rounds with this guy. But then it was Tim's fault. One thing Pandora did, he went down like that, I guess. I don't know why, but he went in like that with his head. It looked like, I don't know if he hit his elbow, hit yeah, somewhere on it. Said, his elbow, yeah. And man, when I say the worst kind of cut you could probably get being right in the middle of his fucking forehead, like right there, man, was the Sean cut. I was, Sean, too. I was listening to Sean Porter now, and they were saying, like, he had, uh, at first he was fighting, like, Fedora was fighting inside, and then they said he, he started using his jab. And then yeah. they had a guest on there, I forgot the name or whatever. But shout out to them. But he had they had a guest on there, and he was like, they was like, we got to get credit to Fendora too, though, because he finished the fight with a broken nose. Yeah, you know what I'm saying yeah. that's hard to do. Blood coming down your mouth, and well, trying it's to breathe. hard to breathe. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So yeah, so, I mean there was they, they was saying him, that he made. They said Fendora made good adjustments. He did. He finally, as a big dude, spot like a big man after Tazu got the cut and couldn't yeah. see. Like yeah. he started fighting like a big man for the first time in his whole career. The guy's never fought like a big man. Right, he tried to he, go in he and, fighting and, the inside. And, yeah, and that's what yeah. cutting caught against uh, Brian Mendoza. But yeah. this might have been a good thing for Fendora that he established his jab. Yeah. He established fighting like yeah. a big guy. And he saw he the see, advantages he of see it. He didn't see what worked. He's seen it. Yeah. Like, so now when he goes yeah. back to the drawing board, he's going to say, man, fighting like that's my best option because I'm mm -hmm. way bigger than these fucking guys. And if I can just keep them away and they can't get into me, what mm -hmm. the fuck are they going to do? You can't do anything against a guy that size. But I feel like Tazu had a had a well plot out, thought out plan. He only had a week to what a week two weeks to prepare for him. Mm -hmm. uh, so he he saw something in tape that made him say, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna catch him every time he throws this jab." And that's what he was doing the first couple of rounds. But man, once he got that cut, if you're the corner, once it gets to four rounds. You tell the doctor your fucking guy can't see and go to the scorecards. If anything, you get a draw, keep your fucking belts, yep. or you possibly win that with a, with a decision in four rounds. Yeah, so nah, me, they, 
Uh, it was almost as his corner didn't know what the fuck to do, or they didn't know the rules, one of the two. I, I don't know what it was. And then the equipment they had for that cut, I don't know what you can bring for a cut like that, because it was like a gash. It wasn't just a cut. It wasn't like a, like, it, it was a gash. It was like that fucking thick on top of his head. Like, you could see it, like a chunk of fucking meat. Right. And it just, so it was a gash. Like, they would put the shit on there, and a matter of 10 seconds, the minute he would leave the corner, you would see it just streaming right down to his face. So he, you know, he'd throw a punch and he would wipe his face with his glove trying to get the blood, you know, throw a punch and then get caught with uh, jabs. But, I mean, for him to finish a fight shows a lot about Tim Tazu. You know, that he does have that warrior spirit to say, hey, yeah. I shouldn't. I should. I, he know he could have went to the corner. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if his corner really knew that rule that well. Because what happens is you tell the uh, – the doctor, your guy can't see. He relays that to the ref, and the ref and makes a decision it. to stop the fight. Yeah. You know, and none of that was relayed to Zoo. And the and the cut guy are the I actual doctor. Overconfident. Well, the doc. It wasn't only that. That doctor really didn't make any sense to me because it was a bad cut gash, and he just kept saying, "Oh, you'll be all right. Just go out there and fight. You'll be all right. Oh, it'll be fine." And I'm like, dude, that's not a fine. Like he he can't go. Like he can't see. Like that's a disadvantage. That's he was your saying eyes. that, or his corner was saying that. No, that doctor was saying that. The doctor was like, oh, you'll be fine, and you know, you you you'll be okay. Just continue to fight. And he went out there and just continued to fight. And I'm like, why is this doctor giving that advice? And you know, like he should be asking him, can you fucking see? You know, and how long can you see? Because in that situation, you can't fight a guy at that height advantage. And then had that big of a disadvantage, another disadvantage that's your own of blood running in your eye and think you're going to be able to beat a guy like that. Like, it's right. a door of that size. But what were your thoughts of Spence jumping in that ring? Hmm. And so he, he looked a little chubby. It wasn't me. Or did Spence look like he put on a little weight? He heard I, my boy Terrence so He looked like a linebacker. Yeah. But, yeah. but I feel like, come on, Spence. Like, I mean... He gonna do what he do because he a cash cow. He big money. He they spoil Earl Spence over there. So you know, but I'm like, wait in line, bro. Like, and he don't like he 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 feel like he always got to jump the gun. Like mm -hmm. that's gonna be a hard fight for you, bro. And I don't think you. I don't know, man. Like I don't know. Like I really don't know. I don't think he would have. I think Tazu would have been a hard fight for him too. Like so. Yeah. Yeah. Like just because we don't know where he at, and he took so like I ain't gonna say he take he took long off, but for him to get beat how he got beat his last fight is like, mm -hmm. mm, you know. But I don't think he should get that damn fight. They talking about Fedora, they have to lose one of his belts, and and then like they don't want him to fight Terrence Crawford. Like I don't know, man. This should be confusing. Like he should be able to jump that line because you got other people though. Like you, yeah. could, you, you got other people waiting. Like how he jump all the way off a lot. I could see if he was the undisputed champ at one forty seven. Yeah. Then, man, you off a loss, you gonna be able to get that fight when you got, uh, we got Lubin that just won this fight that should be able to do a rematch. They should be able to do a rematch or you know what I'm saying? Like you got yeah. other people in line. How you jump them coming off a loss in a light lower yeah. weight class? Like, nah, that shouldn't go like that. I feel like, for real, even Keith Thurman, he shouldn't have got that fight either. No. How you, how you, uh, how you skipping these guys that's already, already 154? Even Danny well, Gar Danny off Garcia fought too. one fight at 154. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. hey, like nah, man. Hell no. Nah. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's my issue is watching the guys that are losing right now being rewarded. Fedora was almost kind of rewarded this week. Yeah. You know, he a loss was. against Mendoza, and he comes he in was. and he gets the WBC and WBO belt both in the same week. Now, the thing that I was really confused by is that the uh, WBC or whatever commission it was, WBO, put him on a injury, six-month injury thing, where he can't fight for six months over a broken nose. Yeah, yeah, nah, yeah. If you get injured, you can't fight for six months. You okay, gotta yeah, so they put him out for hand. six months. Yeah, and, broken, anything. Yeah, you automatically, you automatically suspended for six months. Yeah, so I think as much he wants to give Tazu the rematch, he's made that clear that hey, I do want to give him the rematch. But the WBC is kind of pushing either Crawford or Spence to be the really? next guy that he does they, fight. 
we in the era we ain't really trying to see no rematches now. You know why we ain't trying to see no rematches in this era? And I'm gonna talk for me. And I feel like this the whole era because we ain't getting the best fight in the best. Yeah. Once we get the best fight in the best, we love to see rematches. We yeah, love. We want, to, yeah. Yeah. Give us the best fight in the best first before y'all say, "Oh, well, he gonna get that." No, because it's the next man up. Yeah, yeah, and that's how it should be. Yeah, rematch, I'm 50-50 on rematches, like you said, when it's two big blockbuster fighters and it was a duel and it was like, man, that fight has to be ran back. You say it in your head, man, you got to run that back. Uh, and that, those are the, that's when I like rematches, but I don't like rematches when it holds up a division because yeah, now you got to fight a guy like De Devin Haney to fucking just demolish Kambosa, and then he had to fight him again. And did the exact same thing, and that was just a waste of time in the lightweight. At that time, he could have possibly fought Shakur and or Loma. Tank. Yeah, Tank or and then Loma at at that point uh, mm -hmm. instead of having to go refight Cabosa in a rematch. Yeah. Uh, boxing definitely needs to look into Once that. Well, and he yeah. watched him though. Yeah, and and it should be the decision of the of the guy who wins to have that rematch clause, not not the champion. I guess that's uh, the benefit of being the champion is that you can say, "Hey, I want a rematch clause," but Tim Tazu nah, didn't have a rematch called in his. Shit, bro. You just said some shit. It should be beneficial of whoever win this fight decide if they want to fight this man or move on. Yeah, that exactly. Should how yeah. Be. That should be yeah. how it should be. You the decision I mean? of the guy who wins, no doubt. It, yeah. it, they holding this shit back too much, bro. Like, it's a yeah. hold back. Like, it's taking too long. Motherfucker, boxers, they last long as far as boxing wise. Some do. But the shit get old. Like we get older, we get tired of like hearing and what this should be. Like, or they ain't fighting yet. Like, bro, that shit get old. We ain't trying to watch no old ass watch that. We want to see them in their prime while they bang it. Yeah, we don't yeah. want no excuse like, oh, you yeah. know what I mean? But some people, I mean, Floyd, he still looked good at his age. Pacquiao did too. But we ain't trying to wait that many that long, man. Nah, and then, and then you move up even one forty seven. When you gonna move up to one forty seven? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's to me, boxing is like a young dude sport. And as much as these older dudes, I don't mind, like you said, but you see the decline in them, you know, and then you see them start cherry picking like Canelo is doing. You know what I mean? He don't want to fight the best. He just want to keep making money, cherry picking, making everybody think he's the greatest in the world, but not, you know, it's, it, you get to that point where I guess, and then I hate the fact where they say they earn that right. You don't ever earn the right to cherry pick in a sport. You know, if you want to be the best and fight the best, you claim to be the best, then what? fight the best, man. Don't ever claim that, well, I've earned the right to fight who I want to fight. And that Canelo man mentality is so fucking stupid. We need and, some type of rules, like. Yeah, yeah exactly. The NBA, rules to the NBA, they can't play who they want to play. Like, Yeah, you can't get to the championship. got to put a little bit more structure on this shit, man. This yeah. shit is so. Like, I yeah. love boxing. It's going. It been good. It been good. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But some of that shit they be doing be bullshit. Because it's just not organized, man. You got so many different sanctioning bodies. Each each belt has a sanctioning body. It's all about money with the belt. So you mm -hmm. got 50 billion fucking belts out there just so they can make more money off intern belts and bullshit ass shit that they shouldn't have. It should be one champion, each motherfucking division, as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Should be no interim champion, no motherfucking contending champion, lightweight, <laughs> yeah. lightweight. Interim interim champion, like what the fuck is that? What do you mean, an interim interim champion? Like that don't even make like, any sense. Rank one, he ranked two. We don't yeah, need no yeah. Belts to, to, what them belts? Ain't nobody even fighting for them. It's, just, it's, it's all about that. That's what them belts are. They these bodies get together, and then what kills me is none of them really have the same rules, and that's what drives me crazy is that none have the same rules, and none follow their own fucking rules. Like they just let shit go. Like I, I don't know, man. It it does irritate me. The wild wild west that boxing is is just kind of every man for himself. It's almost like an individual sport. It's not, you know, even though you got guys signed to promotional companies, it's all individual things because even the showtime, they're not promoting a whole stable. They promote their best fighters. Right. Yeah. You know I mean, and if you're the best, they promote you more just like Spence. They want to keep Spence up against Fedora to keep those belts in house. That's why they would do that fight before they would let Crawford, even though the WBC already claimed Crawford as a mandatory for that belt at 154. I don't know what he did. He went to him supposedly before that fight with Tazu and Thurman 
was going down and went to him and said something about he wanted to be in there. Uh, he was moving to 154, I guess. And they said, all right, well, you're automatic mandatory. And you know what's so crazy? You know what's so crazy, bro? You bring that up. When Thurman and Zoo was about to fight, right? We ain't hear Earl Spence talking about he wanted to yeah. fight. Sorry. He none of that, but when he got the Fendora rematch, when he got Fendora to fight, then yeah. he pop up. Come, that's ain't that kind of out of, out of nowhere, yeah, yeah, out of nowhere, he just pops up. Well, because he want it's it's PBC, and if we want you to fight Fendora. I'm, I'm pretty sure Fendora is a I'm PBC guy. Also, Thurman and Tazu, PBC too, and we ain't hear yeah. nothing. We ain't even. That is, that is weird about, that he We up. was talking about Earl Spence Crawford. Maybe, maybe yeah. he thinks the door is an easy fight, and I think guys are underestimating him. Honestly, uh, he got knocked out viciously. But like I said, if he learned anything from this fight, to fight like a big man, and if he really takes that to the next level now, because you can learn from fights, man. Every single fight, you should learn something, right? And he goes back and he watches that and goes, "Damn, man, that's the way I'm supposed to be fighting." Mm-hmm. And he does it. He's going to be real fucking hard to beat at 154. That that mm-hmm. size, really. And he was a lot thicker than what I thought he was. He he's skinny, but he's got like a like he's growing into his body. It seems like yeah, yeah. like he's younger, but he's now starting to grow into that body. Mm-hmm. And he's like fuck with the potential of that guy. What what weight do you think he could get up to? He should be able to get up to 175 easy. That's what I was saying. 175 easy all day with him. You know. Well, okay. uh, uh, David Benavidez said he'd be sparring. They'd be sparring. Yeah, I he said he was said he's size. tough. Benavidez gave him a good compliment. Like, he tough. But yes. it's like, you from sparring him? Like, yeah, he hell. Like, he's like 6'5". Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, he tall. Yeah, yeah, he's a big fucking... I think he's 6'7", bro. Some fucking crazy shit. Like, it was ridiculous. <laughs> when I saw him and Tazu next to each other, yeah. it was like a praying mantis over top of its prey. Yeah. <laughs> like, we got like, win, the wham being boxing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He's a wham <wimpy> being boxing. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, of course, the Cruz versus Roley fight was kind of what I thought was going to happen. I, like I've said, Roley is an overrated champ. He can sell a fight, but he's not. Like, everybody keeps telling, talking about his power. I haven't seen that. I've man, watched his, fight, his last four fights. No power, man. Four fights with Roley, and I've never seen his power whatsoever, but they keep talking about, well, he does have power. I ain't seen that power at all, bro. Not I have not time. seen that power, man. He and probably he, had it when he fought Tank, because he was that's the best I've ever seen him look. Yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, that's Tank. That's a lot of Tank, too. He, yeah. he, wants you to, he wants you to get confident so you throw punches. Yeah. He's like, look, oh, man, you got me. Oh my god, you're so no, good. No, I'm saying, I'm saying. <laughs> and then he sleeps in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, I'm saying, like Tank Tank said he hit he he hit hard. I'm sure he wouldn't be lying. I want <laughs> after he fought him, so I know I'm sure he won he wouldn't lie, but that's the best I ever seen dude look like. And he probably shouldn't even switch coaches. Like sometimes yeah. it ain't the coach, sometimes it's yep. you, my boy. Yeah, exactly. Uh but I thought Pitbull did what he did, man. Now, but I think he's getting a little too much hype from this fight. Uh, you know, the comparisons of Mike Tyson, his style. I compare him. To, I, I, I even said I call him the Mexican Tyson because of his style. But his power. Like well, he don't have the feet and the movement. Type. That's don't speed. Get the power like Tyson. And that fucking speed and that power definitely didn't transition to one hundred and forty, as it was in one hundred and thirty-five. I don't think he got the the like the the one punch power like Tank. No. Like, ooh, he got no. the. He got the put together power, like he got it. Yeah, bunch, got the punches got to come in bunches, like yeah, enough to stun you. But yeah. either Roley has a great ten, or his power just didn't come with him, because everybody's like, well, he had Roley stunned. He had him stunned, but he, he didn't knock him out. Yeah, he, he didn't know. lay him out. Yeah. They had to stop the fight, and Roley was like, "Happy <laughs> Easter, everybody!" <laughs> and I'm like, "Damn, he got he got knocked retarded. Like he yeah. was dumber than what he was coming into the ring. Not time to be a dick." But yeah, I mean, to, in my opinion, I just think like I, I like Cruz, but any of the top one hundred and forty guys beat Cruz. Take that belt from him. The best fight for him is uh, Subaru Mateus. That's that's my opinion at one hundred and forty. That's what His I heard. Eyes, everything like that. Uh, I heard. He need to go back down though. 
I think he should too. I, well, I wouldn't mind seeing him fight another fight at 140, defend his belt. But here's the thing. Well, I think it'd be a good fight with him though, because he wishy washy right now is Tio. Tio, yeah, I think that pressure that he puts, how would yeah. Tio go against yeah. that pressure? How would he handle that yeah. kind of pressure? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think that would be a good one. But I also think that uh, the guy who's in line that should he should be fighting, uh, in all honesty, is uh, Barossa, uh, fucking uh, Ishmael Barossa, the dude that beat Roley. But they stopped the fight for the ghost punch. Oh, OG, OG, OG that just dropped uh, the the dude out yeah, of he just uh, won. The Davis he just won, o- O'Hara, O'Hara Davis. Yeah. yeah, he dropped O'Hara Davis in the first second round yeah. uh, just a, just a couple months ago. He yeah. should be who he's fighting next. There shouldn't be any question asked because he is definitely has earned that right to fight for that belt. He won that belt, but they took it, robbed him in the Roley fight. Then he come out and knocked out O'Hara Davis within a round or two, a young up-and-coming prospect. So he definitely deserves that fight. And that's a, to me, that's a good fight because these two both have somewhat power. Well, we've seen Barroza. Barroza's got vicious power, I feel like. I, that guy, he's got that old man power. But I, just, I think that would be a good fight, a more deserving fight for Barroza. You know what I mean? Uh, Cruz may not want to fight him because that's not the name that people are going to watch. People are still, you know, who's Barroza? But as far as who deserves it, Barossa deserves it. Yeah. Who he should fight, the money fight would be Subaru Mateus because, you know, they're both newer to the division. Uh, Subaru is not really newer to the division. He's got the IBF belt. Plus, right there, you got both belts coming up. Uh, what what did uh, Roley just win? The WBA. The WBA. Then Subaru has the, w, the IBF. So that would narrow that down to Mateus, one guy Mateus. having two of those. Mateus, and, right. Yeah, Mateus. and then Devin and Teo both have a belt. If they fight after Garcia Teo, Garcia Haney, then by the next year you could have a unification at the one uh one forty division. Give mm-hmm. Devin a not and I would favor Devin to unify that division by far. I gotta see how he look this fight. Man, I'm telling you he's, he's <laughs> He's something special, man. That kid is unreal. But uh, of course, uh, Richard Richardson Hitchens, man, he got a controversial decision this week against uh, uh, Lemos. I like I said, I was in and out on this fight. It was late, and uh, you, I was tired. I was like, man, I'm just kind of <laughs> catching it and then looking over. And every time I watched it, it looked like the early rounds that I had caught. Lemos was coming with some pressure and power. He kind of stunned, uh, you know, Hitchens, Hitchens a couple times. Uh, and then the later rounds, it seemed like Hitchens started coming back, you know, getting the better of him. Looked like Lemos was tiring down. But then, boom, Lemos came back in the later, later rounds, landed some heavy punches. And then they finished out pretty even in the last two rounds of what I just kind of what I caught uh, off and on watching it. But uh, there were people saying that. Of course, Hitchens, they, they say Hitchens lost. What I saw, it could have been a draw easily, kind of what I saw going back and forth the way they were. Uh, but they were saying there's a, un, a bunch of unanswered questions with Hitchens now. I don't see that. I think everything you wanted answered was answered. I mean, how, how does he do against pressure? How can he take a punch? Can he take a punch? He showcased all and Lemos landed big punches on him. Yeah. He pressured him, and he went through all that adversity, and he showed that, hey, I can – make it through a tough fight. So yeah. I think a lot of good questions were answered as far as Hitchens, and it was a good fight for him. I just was to the- come out with the win, you know what I mean? Right, just had a little off night, but Shakur said if he would have came down there and, and did camp down there with him, said he would have he would have stopped Doug. So you know that all that be playing effect because he ain't around Shakur no more, so he ain't, you know. And then they said his coaches was in question because – they they was telling him the wrong shit in the corner. I heard like so. I don't know. He just got to go back to the drawing board. But like the uh, they were saying, dude said on on Sean Porter and them podcast, like he was saying, like American fighters, we got it, we got uh, we got a problem with fighting fighters from Argentina. Like we 
like we like they they got our number like you know what i'm saying well it's like, an aggressive style that they do they come forward yeah. they throw heavy punches and if you if you're not good at fighting off your back foot and that's the number one thing i teach my motherfucking kids dude is the back step yeah. i swear on my life it's the best form of defense that you can have yeah. because if you can fight and backwards not throwing your jab to set up that counter bro not it's it's an easy way to stop that pressure that. You're knocking them off of their distance, but you still reading. You still exactly, up. yeah. You're maintaining that reach. You're keeping yeah. that distance while yeah. going back. And if they get over aggressive, you come with a counter. Boom, counter, counter. or spin. All them. fucking yeah. And I just like that's why that's why I reiterated with my kids. Like, man, this is the best form you ever get with somebody who's over aggressive. You're gonna be fighting on your back foot, and mm -hmm. if you don't know how to fight on your back foot and counter. Yeah. It's gonna be a tough. It's gonna be a long night for you, and chances are you might get caught, and then you're gonna you're gonna really see what your chin's like. And mm -hmm. I, but I thought Hitchens he he faced good adversity and he got through it. I think he learns a lot from this fight, like you said. Maybe going back to the Shakur camp, not changing things up, going back and uh, sure, he, you know, he said they ain't, he said they ain't no. gonna fuck with him no more. He got fucked. He can't be like <laughs> that. Shakur be, Shakur be on some shit sometimes. He said no, yeah. no time soon. Shakur. Yeah, that shit, I don't know, man. They, they, he said no time soon. You wishing the best though, but I don't know, man. I'm not, they being they feel it too much, man. Yeah, it's boxing, man. You can't. You got to realize, dudes are gonna do what they think might be better for them. Uh, you know what I mean? And decisions nah, you know, they just might. You know, your own decisions in a career, and then you. No, you know, he was saying he thinks Shakur was. He said that like he basically was saying like he thought Shakur was scared of uh. Who we fight this left fight like he was scared of him and, and now really but yeah and Shakur he he took that some type of way like dang you my dog and he was like yeah. hey, you, you already you already I let you slide with the op you was already hanging around the op which was tank you know he'd be around tank yeah. too so he like I was already letting you do that then you go on here on interviews talking about me basically when you could have yeah. called me and did it this and this like. You know what I'm saying? It was like if it was you, I would I wouldn't have never said that. Like, you know what I mean? No, because especially if it's a dude you train with you around, you don't ever say they That's were scared. The there wasn't nothing about that fight where Shakur was scared. No, you know what I mean, they, they, I, mean they, I, I just don't know they, what the hell people watched in that fight because the dude he fought, he he beat him injured, number one, and dude didn't throw shit. Like what what like what the he fuck was the, he watching that fight like, with power, like mm -hmm. Yeah, because everybody was talking about how hard he hit, but he didn't throw any punches. Yeah. I'm like, how the fuck do we know how hard he if he's not going to throw anything? But, yeah, I mean, I, I like Hitchens. Oh, he uh, was saying, and I think he said he thinks Shakur is scared to get hit. Yeah. I mean, it's boxing. You're not scared a lot to get of, hit. A lot of them be saying, like, he's scared to get hit. Like, first of all, you it's hard to hit him. He, his defense just immaculate. And yeah. then, who, ain't nobody trying to get hit. Like it's no, boxing. No, you I'm not that's, trying to get hit, but yeah. if the punch come, I'm a, I, I, and it hit and it lands. I ain't got no choice but to take it. But who yeah. who in they right mind trying to get hit? I ain't trying to get I, hit. And there's some dudes out there, man. I know when I used to get in street fights, bro. I let people punch me just to get me kind of hyped up. Like go ahead, yeah, get that first punch. Ooh, yeah, but and I'm like, all right, motherfucker, let's do this, and I'll be ready to go. But that but, was you know, that's that different. That's up, street you know fight. Know? That's yeah, yeah. Fight. that ain't boxing. In, in boxing, you don't let somebody that catch one you punch like boxing, that. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> <doing night -night. laughs> so what what happened? <laughs> yeah, you see, they oh, called yeah. Devin Haney, Haney pillow hands, and he uh dropped Reg it's Regis. So yeah, you know yeah, the, the right punch. They hey they they all they do is hit bags and mitts. So it's some type all of day, bro. All exercise day. there, you feel me? Like they yeah. ain't when you hit I mean, the back, even a dude that fights professionally at those levels, you know, regardless if they're not, even if they're not knocking dudes in the ring out, they can knock the average dude out. Yeah, of course. All day, every day. Like yeah, yeah. you'd be like, damn, bro. Like he does hit hard. But like, yeah, he, even if you think you don't hit hard at 140, this motherfucker hits you in real life. And you're gonna be like, yeah. God damn, that motherfucker hits hard. Yeah, because they they that's an exercise they do every day. Exactly. Doing First, every day. Muscles. People don't realize you're building these muscles here. You're building yeah. those hand muscles. Like your strength yeah. is, you're, you're putting muscles in places that people don't know. They don't even. Have. They don't even. You know that, and they don't even lift weights like that. They arms be like this, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying that's for that constant the cardio, bro. That constant cardio, oh, man. Uh -huh. Hell yeah.
Uh, moving on from that fight, of course, man, this week uh, we got a couple good fights on the schedule. Jordan Gill versus Zelfa Barrett. Uh, of course, Gill was a guy who knocked out, viciously knocked out uh, Michael Conlon last year. Put him back on the map. I favor uh, Barrett in this, dude. I'm going to go with my guy, Jack, who also favors Barrett, too. He thinks Barrett uh, is going to bring a little bit more to the table for Gill. But that fight is on. Uh, we're going to get all day boxing this week. That's my favorite week because it's going to be on over in the UK. On the zone, you guys can catch that one. Uh, I'm pretty sure about one, two o'clock fight time starts here in the U.S. And that runs usually till about five or six o'clock where the main card jumps in. And then we're going to go into our nightcap with Mr. Ohio and motherfucking self. The real, the real. Now, listen up, motherfuckers. The real big baby Anderson. The real motherfucking baby. Jared Anderson, baby. He's going to be fighting that night. I know who you're favoring. I know who I favor in that fight. I mean, uh, no doubt. I mean, come on. My man. question is. The doubt, no doubt, and he wins that fight. Is Jared Anderson a future heavyweight in oh. boxing? And how long does it take him to get there? Of course, I just, of course, I been, yeah, hell yeah, he a future heavyweight champ. Just got to stay disciplined, keep his mind focused. But I know what it's gonna be when he see that when he see that uh beautiful baby he about to have. That's gonna yeah. turn him to a hell whole. Yeah. You feel me? That's going to really summer him down where he going to grow as a man. Like, yeah. everybody made mistakes, so I ain't holding. I ain't going to say. Yeah, I don't. I don't hold. I did oh, stupid he, ass shit when I was crashing young. out. No, bro. People, nah, people just, make he, mistakes, bro. Yeah. Police officers make mistakes. They probably just don't get caught for it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, Every, everybody so, does in your life, man. So, so, so hell yeah, I see my yeah, I see my boy as a future heavyweight champion, man. He, he got everything he need, man. Just got to stay focused, work on the shit that he need to work on, work on. Mm -hmm. And he don't, and he a switch hitter too. And I ain't know that till his last fight. Like, dude, yeah. nice. he nice, man. And I like who he got. Uh, He got the one Tiger Johnson coach. He been working with Oh, him. yeah? And okay. I like, I like dude, man. And I ain't mm -hmm. going to say I, I like him just because he young. Yeah. He young and he, he was a boxer. You know what I'm saying? A decent boxer too at that, and he young where he can relate to the young fighters. He can really yeah. that might be something the young fighters really listen to him because he can relate. He he ain't that far off. He like a big brother to them instead of a, a dad or a grandpa trying to force him. To, he he yeah. can relate the message probably better. Like and he I like how he coach. Like he he tell you what you doing wrong. Like if you watch Tiger Johnson fight, it it was going like. It was going viral how he how he was talking to him. They was like, man, we like how he, the announcer saying, man, I like how he's breaking it down to Tiger. And, and Tiger went out there and did exactly what he said. Yeah. Do. And it, the points was on point. What he told him to do it, everything worked. Like, I can't think of his name right now, though, but I think you probably know who I'm talking about. Like, talking yeah, about but, yeah, yeah. That's all the name I for sure know. I, I yeah. love a good corner guy. I love a good trainer, man, because they're they're your eyes. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? They're seeing things that you might not see, and, and they, they allow you to make adjustments. And if you're smart enough to listen to your corner and you have a good corner guy, you know what I mean? You can go really far in the sport, man. Uh, so, yeah, that's a great move for him as far as going with a trainer like that. I think that improves him even more. We've seen that he's got the athleticism. He doesn't move like a heavyweight. He moves more like a cruiserweight. You know what I mean? With the with his style and everything like that. Uh, now, yeah. on that card, the guy I think he'll face next is the uh, co-main event on that. Appa, uh, yeah, you know they're going to make that whatever. I knew yeah. that when I see. Yeah, yeah. As soon as they put him on there, I said that's the next dude he fights, yeah. which would be a good fight for him. That will be a really good test. I think he still beats too, but I think that would be a really good test for him. Uh, to keep stepping him up level at level. Uh, you also got Abdullah Mason on that card, too. Uh, he'll be fighting, so we'll be keeping an eye on him. Uh, pretty yeah. active. What is that, the second time he's fought this year already? Man, nah, Abdullah is active, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's the second time already. Him. I mean, hey, they we're moving in April. Like a man. He I mean, because it, they see it, bro. He'll take over that lightweight division in the next two years. Uh, I, and I think you can put him up against Tank or anybody in two years. And I mean, with the, his skill level now, 
I'm putting him up against most of the top guys now. In two years, I'm putting this guy against anybody, man. Stay away from Tank. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. Stay away from him. <laughs> I think with Abdullah style, how does Tank? He's not gonna let Tank get in on him for two years. He got right? that size. No, he you know what I'm saying. He cold. I, I'm going with him. I'm going with. Him, but I I got love for Tank. But it's like just stay away from Tank because yeah. he. He he, <laughs> it might not go how you think it's gonna go that night. Like yeah. he, he, I don't think he should fight Tank in two years. I think he should worry about the guys that's coming up around his age. Like, stay away from Shakur. Like, I got the Keyshawn, Keyshawn Davis. Now, I Keyshawn, got the Keyshawn. That, they might. Ooh, that's gonna be nice. I think. I think. I think he beats Keyshawn. Ooh, that'd be I, nice. yeah. That would be a fire-ass fight. Ooh, two uh, years? Another guy I'd like to see him fight that I think he tears up is Raymond Mortala. I'd like to see him fight him. So that's another young up-and-coming Oh, dude. is he with uh, uh, Robert Garcia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's just fought. He, he looked 50-50 in his last fight. but They were talking about him fighting Shakur. Yeah, that's who uh, I wanted Shakur to fight because he had a fight in March. And I was like, man, is that that's not too bad of a turnaround to go fight in June. Mid June, pretty much almost July, because it's like June twentieth. Uh, but of course, now Shakur is going to fight uh the guy Frank Martin fight fought. I can't think of his name. He's some German dude. Wasn't impressed with him though, for sure. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be a pretty good fight card, man. Uh, with Jared Anderson, of course, we're going to favor. I'm going with Anderson all day in that. I don't know much about it, the guy he's fighting. Uh, Rod uh Mar- Marley or Marley. I don't know much about that dude. At all, uh, let me. Uh, look, I got a question for you, real quick. I don't know if you've seen the heavyweight, uh, Bill Haney had in this camp. I don't know, dude. Name, I'm sorry, I ain't on the computer because I search it up. You will probably know him. He a dark skin dude, he got dreads, but he fought somebody and he was like, so they were saying, like, you know, Bill Haney, he a talk shit instigator, damn near. It was like, yeah, Jerry Anderson, we got somebody for you. Like, we got somebody for you now. But I seen dude, I'm going I'm to tell you his name. I'm going to tell you his name later on or something. I'll text it to you, but let you, or so you could watch who I'm talking about. Man, dude cannot fuck with no Jerry Anderson, bro. Like, dude ain't got no power, no nothing. They was like, I'm like, nah, Jerry to destroy dude. Like, yeah. And destroy dude. Yeah, I favor Jared against most heavyweights at this point. Uh, the only one, probably not. Uh, he said he, and actually, he said this week that he does want to fight Deontay Wilder next. That's who he who wants. Who said next. that? Jared Anderson. He wants Wilder next. He said he respects him, but that's the fight he wants next so that he can prove that, you know, he's one of the best out there, which is hard for me. Wilder don't want that smoke. He going to destroy. He was better off. I, I'd rather him fight Parker. Wilder, he going to destroy Wilder. I mean, let's see, man. If Wilder gets that dog back in him, he goes fight. Because if I'm right, he's going to be fighting Zang. That's been announced as the uh, undercard. Uh, okay, you did say that. As one of the uh, five versus five event, if I'm correct, uh, that's going on over there. He will fight Zang. Let's see how he does against Zang. If he gets that dog back in him, I think he's, I don't know, man. I think at this point, he's probably past that point, that prime in his career. Uh, but if he can get a dog back in him, man, that punch puts him in any fight. Stay away from it. We're going to handicap him. That's all we got to do. Handicap him. Keep him at bay. And don't even keep him at bay. Stay up on him. Smother the punch. Yeah. Mother that motherfucker. Yeah, that's just block that right arm pretty much. Yeah. Mother you can't do anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, going into some boxing news this week, man. Of course, uh, I I messaged you about this. Jerome Boots Ennis signs a two-fight, multi-fight deal with uh, Eddie Hearns and Match Room. Yeah, you beat me to the top. I was about to send that to you because you always talk about Match Room. So I'm like, man, I'm about to send this to him. But I was at work when I seen this. You beat me to hey. the I said, damn, <laughs> send it to him. <laughs> yeah. I, I, to me, I like ma- match rooms making a lot of moves right now. Uh, I think they're kind of making moves to uh, really kind of be the top promotional company in boxing. Uh, 
with the numbers that just came out about PBC and that pay-per-view supposedly was a disaster, but I read they sold 1.3 million in pay-per-view. So that's not bad for a Tazu versus Fedora fight, in my opinion, for your very first pay-per-view event. I just feel like pay-per-view, if you're doing anything over 40, 40 bucks, it's got to be a mega fucking event. It's got to mm-hmm. be something I'm going to want to pay $60, $70 for. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Matchroom, the problem I had with the zone, man, is when I started with the zone, it was $20 a month. Then they jumped it up to $24.99 a month. Now it's $29.99 a month. And I'm like, man, get the fuck out of here. And, you charge, <laughs> and you're charging me for pay-per-view? And all the good fights are pay-per-view. And right. you're charging me $30 a month. Like, right. fuck that. Like, I'm not paying you $30 a month to watch boxing and paying for all the, uh, none of the good fights are on there. Like Devin Haney, Garcia, that's pay-per-view. Usyk, Fury, fucking pay-per-view. I got to pay $60 on top of my $30 to watch that shit and pay $60 on top of my $30 to watch the Devin Haney fight. Like they're they're coming out like bandits if people are really paying that. I just I, I was like, I can't do it. Like I paid uh the pay per view, which wasn't bad, the the Joshua and Ghana. Mm-hmm. I paid for that. That was thirty nine ninety nine. I was like, hell yeah, and they gave me a free month. I was like, cool, because I unsubscribed to them a while back. And then I seen that it was, you know, after the month it'd be twenty nine ninety nine a month. I'm like, I'm not paying you motherfuckers thirty dollars, but Outside of that, I think they're making good moves to get Eddie Hearns as a promoter. He's making a lot of good moves, really. Uh, so yeah, so, like, so, so is Oscar. He tries to make the fight side. Yeah, he does. He does. Uh, the only problem is, is, like you said, who's he got in that over in match room at 147 to fight him in welterweight? Crawley is his mandatory. That will Now, he's not with match room. If I'm correct, uh, if I'm correct, oh, that dude, I know probably, that. Yeah, I think he's with PBC. Uh, I'm not, don't right. quote me on it. Um, he just fought last at the end of the last year. I was really impressed with him. Uh, he's been an up and coming dude for a while at 147. Uh, I can't think of the guy that he fought, but he's his mandatory to fight now. He can't really dodge it because you know how the IBF is if he doesn't take that mandatory. Because I think Matchroom's ideal is to make a fight with him and Conor Ben. A bigger fight for him money-wise than Crawley would be. Crawley's his mandatory, but in order for that fight against Conor Ben to happen, he'd have to forfeit his IBF belt. Conor, I would think. Because I don't think the IBF's going to let him skip out on a mandatory. Conor be a ass. <laughs> Boots gonna destroy him. Yeah, I think so too. But then you take that away. I don't really know who else they got. They got Crowder, who was pretty decent. Uh, but Boots, 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 Boots would beat the shit out of Crowder. He's good, but he ain't he ain't Boots good. He ain't, he ain't that level good. Like, uh, he fought a couple times last year. I caught him a couple times. Uh, he's got some power to him. I like him, but he's not. He's more of like a power aggressor style fighter. He's not that technique. You know what I mean? That that me, I'm about to ask you something real quick before I forget. You know the the Mexican that uh the the last uh Boots last fight, the Mexican he fought. Dude was all right. Damn, man. His last fight, huh? It wasn't Barros, was it? It wasn't Barros. What's that? That's his name? Mario Barros, I don't think it was him. Nah, hell no. Nah. He just he moved up to 147. Yeah, no, nah, I want Mario Barros because the they the him and the Mexican dude fought on the same card. They was trying to get him to fight. They was trying to make it to fight the one dude. I can't think of his name, man. The black dude lost against the Mexican. I can't think of dude's name, man. I'm about to find out right now. Good. Computer ain't now. Yeah, look it up. You got your phone, so you. Yeah, there. I'm gonna go on his box rack. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, I know that dude, Villa. Oh uh, yeah, Villa. Ro- Roman, 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 uh, Villa, Roman right, Villa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Villa fought. fought. See who Villa fought uh, before that. Before he fought, uh, Boots. 
All right. And then he fought before Boots, he fought Rashid Ellis. Rashid Ellis. Ellis. And won that fight by uh, KO. Yeah, but they felt like, I don't know, but they were trying to build Rashid Ellis up for him to fight Boots. But he ended up losing the Villa. Okay. So Villa ended up fighting Boots. Okay. So but I, I think Rashid Ellis and Boots would be a good fight for real. I think uh uh e M A what's his name? E Mantis Stan Stanis is a great fight for Boots and why they haven't fought, but that dude, he'll be on the uh undercard of the uh Canelo Munguia fight, but he hasn't fought in like I two thought plus Canelo fucking years. Right? I thought he I thought he got injured or some shit. Ooh, Canelo and Munguia? I didn't see anything on anything that's that it's been canceled. Yeah, I was I all over. They, they, they brought somebody else in because he got injured, and he picked somebody else. Or was that before? That might have been before. Yeah, because he's uh, as far as I see, the fight's still on. They named the undercard uh, today or yesterday. They named the oh, undercard. Oh, yeah, but I thought they were saying dude got injured, so he ended up picking somebody else that was a bum when he could have picked David Benavidez. Well, now I hear he's trying to put a uh, weight, uh, what, what do they call it, a rehydration clause on, on David, David. If, he does, if, if he does fight him. He said if he takes a fight, David he wants a rehydration clause. And David, David said, said, I'll take it. it. Yeah. He said, I'll take it, which I don't think he should. You shouldn't have to fight under those stipulations, man. Come back down. You know, you were a 168 guy. Damn. You know what I mean? You know, come back down, fight him. But if he wants to fight him at a catch weight, Rehydration clause doesn't make any sense because then you're right back down to 168, which is, you know, in favor. I, I I don't know, man. I think Canelo should just. I don't know if you're David Benavidez and you win this next fight, and you have the opportunity to win the awesome. winner of the ball awesome. versus Better Be, then you could just say fuck the Canelo fight. You don't need him because you go and unify the 175. The fuck's he need Canelo for a 168? It's just a name at that point. Yeah, you know I mean, it's kind of weird to me though, like because we doing all this weight, right? We working out, we weigh in at one forty seven, boom, 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 and then we can rehydrate, and you might come in still bigger than me. What the fuck is the point of that? I think it should be yeah. catch weight. Okay, when we weigh in, we both. <laughs> 147, we can't go past 156. It yeah. should be that. It should be all oh, because you could blow back up and be bigger. Like, I don't understand. Or, or I my need to thing talk is to somebody deep because I don't understand that shit. Like, what's the science of that? Here, here's what should happen same day weigh ins. Fuck yeah, that. Same what, day weigh in. If you are a 140 fighter, that's the catch weight, though. And you're but the catch weight around is, at 168. Then why the fuck aren't you fighting at 154? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What's the science? What's, what's the science of this shit? Though? Like I don't get it. Like that's what I've been trying to. I was thinking that too. That's weird that you're saying that because earlier this week I was talking to a guy at my work. Like it doesn't make sense that these guys do walk around at 160, but then they fight at 140. Is it what what is behind that form? Like why do boxers do that? That is a good question. Anybody out there, man, you want to put in the comments, please. On why boxers Fight at 140, but walk around at a higher weight and don't fight at that weight. Why not fight at the weight that you're more comfortable with and you don't have to keep jumping back down and doing that to your body? Because that's obviously not a good thing to keep going back down to 140 no. and then having to jump back up to 168 in a matter of a day. A matter that's of a day, I, these guys jump back up. Everybody be crying about the catch weight shit. I feel like if I'm fighting you, we both just lost this weight to get the 147, right? We're yeah. not going to fight at 147, which is strange to me. So why are we losing all this weight? The weight is weight, and then we could go back up to whatever, yeah. right? So it's like we're doing all this, draining all our body. So it should be a catch where, okay, you can't go past 155, like, or you can't go past this 10 pounds. Like, why yeah. can't you go to 147? And then when you come in that fight night, you done shot up to 175, 160. Like, what the fuck? Like, what's the whole reason then? What? Because I'm still coming in over big, big, bigger than this man. Like, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it don't matter how much weight I just lost. I got, I did something to still be bigger than this man. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah, yeah. I don't get it. Why not fight? Well, more? I don't know, bro. Why that's... not fight at your at your weight, which would make more sense? And then also, like you said, when and, and that's why everybody talks shit about Tank and his rehydration clause. But he knows if I'm gonna fight you at 140, I'm gonna be 140. Yeah, because that's what I'm gonna get at. Yeah. You're gonna be one fucking sixty. Yeah, you're gonna have a twenty pound weight difference on me. Right. So he ain't stupid for that rehab. Tank smart. Tank knows what the yeah, fuck. That's he's dumb. Doing. And they be trying I'll to be like, no, you at one forty. No, but that's you ain't getting smart. no higher than one forty two, motherfucker. So <laughs> you're gonna come in, and then like Ryan still tries to use it as an excuse. You take that fight. You take that fight, bro. Like you know what you're doing. But that is a rule that should be, like you said, implemented in every fight. Oh, automatic rehydration clause that you can't get above this weight. You cannot go bloom back up to 168 like the Regis and uh, Haney fight. They That's what really kind of got it for me to, to, to start looking at it was when they said Danny, uh, Devin came in at 168, Regis came in at 154. These are two dudes fighting at 140. 140 and they bloomed up 14 pounds and fucking 28 pounds. In a day, like yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, hold on, like, so yeah, so that's what brought it to my attention was when I saw that happen. That's when I was like, hold on, that don't make sense. Like, why are you even allowed to do that? Why, why would you be allowed to blow it up that big? So now I do kind of see what Canelo's saying. Like, well, if I fight David, he's just going to be 20 pounds bigger than me. But Canelo, most guys are going to be bigger than him at 168. He's a small. I don't want to hear none of his. Sports stature 168 dude. He's not a big dude at 168 I, I already. I excuses for the shit. I just wonder why. Yeah, why, what, what's yeah, behind why, that? Why make, it, why make it where that man got an advantage if we both came in here on this even to make this weight even scale? Why do yeah. this man got an advantage to me to blow back up and be 20 yeah. pounds heavier than me when we should be somewhere when we come to fight, we should be somewhere in that same range that night. Yeah. So it don't yeah. matter if I did all this hard work and he did all this hard work to make this 147, 140, whatever, to blow up 20 more pounds or five times, I mean, five pounds, 10 pounds bigger than me. And he got a, that's just like, that's just like a heavyweight. Deontay Wilder and now it ain't no weight limit. So whoever you fight, yeah. you the event, yeah. that's stupid as fuck. Tyson Fury had a bigger, way bigger event. Way bigger. Use that weight. Put all that weight on. Yeah. Come on, man. Make it make sense. Like that don't make yeah. no sense to me. Like what the fuck? Like no, bro. That don't. That ain't gonna never. And you can't make. You can't really make me. Cause it is what it is. You gonna fight cause it's boxing. But you can't make me make no way to make that make sense to me. Like I'm losing yeah, because... this weight. You gotta really explain that reason for that <laughs> strategy. Like. And, and make it make sense to me, like maybe they why? feel like they fight more comfortable at a certain weight. Like I mean, because I mean, think about it. Devin walks around at one six eight. This dude started fighting at what one thirty, one thirty five. Then he moved up to one forty. He yeah. could fight at one forty seven easily, and and within three years he could be definitely. I mean, right now he could fight at one fifty four if he kept if he walks around at one six eight. He could walk. He could fight at one fifty four easy. Uh, but also a lot of things I do notice in boxing. Is that a lot of these guys, like you look at Devin Haney, he fights at 140, he walks around at 168. But stature wise, he's a small ass dude. Like if you're yeah. next to him, you're like, that's Devin Haney? Oh, like height, height size. Yeah, yeah. You, you'd be boxer, surprised. A lot of boxers is not tall for real, though. Yeah, you notice that when you when you're next to him, you're just like, damn, hold yeah. on. Like I thought you was like in the ring, you look like a monster. You know, yeah, next to him, like boxers. you look Bam yeah, Rodriguez, he fights at the small weights, but dude's like almost like when you see him off stage, you think he's like a dwarf. Like mm -hmm. literally, he's that fucking short. Like him and his brother, like they look like dwarfs, man. Like they're so small and they always wear these big ass shirts. And I'm like, bro, this dude is tiny, tiny. But you you be out on the street, you wouldn't think that little dude gonna work you, right? Yeah. <laughs> you got man. like oh, all okay. Yeah, you need to calm your little ass down. <laughs> I don't go into no situations thinking Hell about nah, that. Nah. Hurt me. That's the one know. thing boxing has taught me. You know, that dude might be small, but he probably vicious. You got to watch him. He's like a Wolverine. <laughs> He'll be all over you. Then you get your ass whooped by a little dude in front of your girl and shit. Like, you ain't shit. <laughs> you ain't shit. I'm talking about putting them paws on you. Yeah. Like, man, you see how fast he was? 
do he, trade I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Bell. He might get a he gonna do you so bad. He might get a uh endorsement <laughs> deal from Nike. <laughs> <laughs> and he just ran all over your ass. Yeah, new track deal for you. <laughs> Shit. Be embarrassed as hell. You don't never walk out. You got. You just got to break up with whoever you hate. Fucks under your motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you got to break up with your girl and move. <laughs> you are gonna tell everybody about that, it. That car. <laughs> that car ride gonna be quiet to the motherfucker. <laughs> she gonna be like, "You did all right, baby, but you should. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should have threw that left hook. You be throwing. Uh, away. <laughs> yeah. He did it all. It was he caught you? He caught you. That's all. What it was just his day. <laughs> <laughs> you get smart with her all the time. Like, shut up, man. Like, oh, you want to talk to him like that? You want to talk? <laughs> hey, hey, you just said it was just his day. <laughs> oh, shit. So, hey, that's the warning out there, y'all. Don't take small dudes and size and stature to, to disadvantage. You get embarrassed. Don't, don't judge girl. nobody by how they look. None of that shit. Don't be a Hell fool. Yes. End up getting worked out, about, like, 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 like this little dude from Cincinnati, man. His name, man, man, man. You, you would think he a a good kid, man. Listen, will beat the dog shit out of you, though. Yep. How he look, how he carry himself. You don't even know he box selects you knowing. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah and that's either like you look at Bam Rodriguez. You ain't thinking that motherfucker a boxer. Yeah. You meet him in real life, ain't no way you'd be like, oh, this dude a champion, like a, yeah. a multi-time champion. He's that badass. Like you would have to like I'd be like, man, I gotta watch him. To oh, believe you it. Ain't check out that team, the team combat league stuff, did you? Nah, nah, I haven't checked that out yet. It's on, <laughs> it's on, but you can always go to YouTube and watch it though. I want Hell you to yeah. check it out and just tell me what you think about it. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I was checking out a, I'm a lot of know man man fight though. Man, man, he fight for Team Atlanta, so I'm gonna let you know. Oh, okay, so he's on there. Okay. Yeah, he's nice. on there. He nice. was on nice. He was one of the. They was had the MVP vote. Okay. So it was like every fighter from East Team or whatever. He 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 off his team. He was he was up for the MVP vote. Yeah. Okay. Nice. And, like I told you, they still could fight pro and shit. So, yeah. Okay, nice. I like that. I'm gonna definitely check that out for sure. Yeah, that up. I uh, watched it though. I'm only gonna watch it when he fight. Like, yeah, yeah. I want to check it out, man, because I love getting uh, support to shit like that, man. Checking stuff like that out. Uh, also, tomorrow, guys, man, tune in with us tomorrow. We are going to be doing an interview with a New York boxer, Jack Kelly, man. He's not just a boxer, man. This guy does uh, documentaries. He's in the gym. Loves boxing all the way around, man. Talks it. Catch his show, Catch and Counter, on uh, IFL on YouTube. You can catch that too, man. Dude knows his shit, but he's going to be on with us tomorrow. We're going to do a little interview. Catch that. Probably, I would say, around uh, 3 o'clock might be a comfortable time, man. Don't hold us to that, but 3 o'clock is what we're thinking. Try to uh, interview him. I like that name. I like that that tomorrow. Down here. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty, pretty good show too, man. I like it. Uh, it's got him, a guy named Dibs on there, uh, another dude that they usually, about three of them that do the show. It's a pretty decent little show, I'm man. Subscribe. I like it. I'm going to subscribe to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen uh, to what they saying and talking about. Yeah, yeah, they're on that right now as we speak, man. Sometimes I catch them live, uh, but here lately we do our shows about the same time they do. So, yeah. But I, I usually catch them afterwards. Uh, looks like longtime trainer Gary Shaw, uh, our longtime promoter, passed away this week. Gary Shaw, I don't know if you know much about him. Uh, mm -hmm. He was, I guess, he was a uh, face in boxing. I don't know much about him myself, but uh, you know, condolences to him and his family Rest for the him. RIP to OJ Simpson too, man. Oh yeah, yeah. The OJ juice, went man. down, man. Yeah, the juice he man. went down, man. The juice went down. Uh, what he what he passed away from, man? Oh, colon. Colin Cash. Colin, wow, wow, shit. I'll be watching it. the uh show he was on with uh the rapper Cameron from mm -hmm. and Mace, uh, and he they was already saying he was sick like the, his last like show he was on there, and then when I was uh I looked on my phone I seen he passed I'm like damn that was that cancer like I already yeah. had it like yeah. yeah it happens fast man I had a buddy uh he used to call me Irish I called him Detroit he was from Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm another Dame fan. He was a Michigan fan, man. We just bad like he. Everybody called this guy the biggest asshole in the in the whole plant, and me and him got along perfect with each other. 
Like he come in and uh, he was wearing a Michigan hat, and I was like, "Man, what the fuck is that on your head?" I fucking yeah. lifted my arm up. I said, "Fucking Irish motherfucker," and he was like, "All right, all right." And they left, and they come back, and we talk shit every day after that to each other. But he come a good friend of mine, but he had colon cancer, and uh, he 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 kind of beat it, and then it came back twice as strong, bro. And he didn't even last a year after that. Damn. Yeah, it was one of those things that took him suddenly. Thought he beat it, and then boom, just came back on him. So Gotta yeah, get that colon check, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For real, guys, man. If it runs in your family, they say get checked at forty. If it doesn't get checked by the age of fifty, we know we don't like things in our anus. You know, I definitely don't want no finger in my butt. But oh. if it saves my life, shit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk that shit off. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna yeah. walk it off. So yeah, be smart about that, guys. You don't want to end up like OJ Simpson, or you know, and what you know, it, cold, you? if you can catch it early. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you catch that shit early, yeah, what I mean. you can save your own life. Yeah, you know? I was just saying that. That's crazy. I'm like, you don't want to catch it late. Uh-huh. Yeah, because yeah, because by that time it spreads so fucking fast, bro. Like it's yeah. it's like wildfire. Uh, but yeah, he, uh, Gary Shaw passed away, and then the featherweight contender Arnold Ke- uh, Keegan signs with Top Rank. Uh, he's a pretty good young up and coming guy, man. Glad to see him get a deal with Top Rank, which we'll get to see a lot more of him. You'll be impressed when you watch him. Uh, nice little young fighter, man. I like him a lot. Uh, Richard Torres Jr., unbeaten Richard Torres Jr., will face another unbeaten heavyweight, Brandon Moore, on uh, May 18th. That's going to be a good one. I like Richard Torres, but I don't feel like he's been challenged. He's a guy that I'd like to face. Big, I feel like Big Baby Anderson would box his ears off, but you've seen Torres. Uh, he's been on the last couple uh, top-ranked cards. He's a pretty active dude, too. He fights probably at least four times a year. Every year for the last three years, dude's been super active. Yeah. Uh, I like this style, but he kind of comes forward too much and depends way too much on his power. He did look a lot better in his last fight where he looked like he was working on his footwork a little bit. Uh, and he even kind of mentioned that after the fight that he'd been working on a few things to, uh, because the fight before that, he couldn't knock dude out. And he was giving it his all, but dude just had a good chin. But he said that made him realize that, hey, I can't just be a power puncher. I have to start, you know, my footwork, my hand speed and all that other stuff. He looked pretty good in his last fight. Uh, he starts putting that in with his shit. He, he, it'd be a nice piece to the heavyweight division, no doubt. Hey, uh, Bell, go ahead. What you think about Floyd, uh, little fighter, Camille? I didn't get to watch him. Oh, I did not get to watch him. He was on that card this weekend. You say? Damn. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, they was banging, bro. That was a good fight, bro. I did they not get to see him salty. That was he and he fought another up and coming under feet under uh defeated uh fighter. And that was on that was on PBC. Yeah, that was on the Roly uh ro- was that was that the prelims before the fight? I think the, it was the prelims. Yeah. Okay, cool, because I can go back and watch that on uh my Prime account, so I can go back and actually watch that uh on the PBC thing. I have to check him out. What's his name again, man? Kermel Morton. Kermel uh, Morton. What's his last name? Morton. M- I think you spell it M O T I O N. Man, you put him in YouTube. It's gonna pop up, bro. He 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 he, he trendy. All right. He he up and coming, man. I'm gonna definitely check him out. Uh, I'm gonna check him out on the uh, Prime tonight. Actually, I'll move in. What happened? I said, remember, I showed you. He looked like Tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah, he did. He looked like a small, like a young version of Tank when Tank was younger too. Yeah, he, uh, for sure. Yeah, but I'm gonna check him out though because I got some time. I don't work tomorrow. So yeah, I'm gonna some more drink that, in my ass and enjoy my fucking night. Yeah, that is. He, he got banged it out. Banging, bro. They was banging, bro. They was banging, bro. Who he fight? Like four years older than him too, though. Because I think he only like 17. I think dude was like 20. All right. Woo! Yeah, on that uh, Canelo Munguia card, they uh, announced who's going to be on the undercard of that, which seems pretty good to me. Uh, Mario Barros is going to be going up against uh, Fabian Medin- Medina. Announced mm-hmm. on the undercard also, uh, Brandon Figueroa uh, is going to go up against uh, Jesse Magdaleno. And then, of course, I talked about this guy we haven't seen him in a couple of years. He was scheduled to fight uh, Virgil Ortiz twice, and it just never happened because Virgil's health got in the way at 147 where he wasn't able to make the weight. Uh, 
Amantis, uh, Amantis Stanionis. He'll be going up against undefeated two-time uh, Olympic gold medalist uh, Gabriel uh, Mastria. So that would be a good fight for him. I don't know if he wants to come back against that guy. He's been an active for two, maybe three years since I've seen Stan Onis fight. So it's been a while for him. He has really no reason to be out of the ring that long, to be honest. Uh, I mean, unless he had health issues that I'm not aware of, I don't really get why he was out of the ring so long because he was able to fight uh, Virgil Ortiz. He was up for both of those fights. Both times it got canceled because of Virgil, and then he just never he just never got back in the ring yet. And it's been easily three years, I'd say. What's, uh, what, what is what, it? What's the dude's name? Is that, that ain't Virgil Ortiz, is it? That ain't Rob, Robert Garcia fighter, is it? Yeah, yeah, he went back to Robert Garcia. He left Robert Garcia for a minute, uh, Virgil did, and then went back to uh, Robert. Virgil, who was the guy that, that was him? And, uh, I can't think right now. Him and um, Canelo got the same trainer. Uh, Ryan Ryan Garcia uh, had the same trainer for a minute. Oh, no, 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 no. I know who you're talking about. Uh, he just fought Oscar Valdez. Did he win that fight? Yeah, 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 yeah. He won by a uh, seventh uh, seventh round knockout. Uh, oh, stop, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice little fight for him, man. Yeah. Good little get back. He needed that win uh, for sure. Uh, also, Triple G talks retirement. So he's pretty much done. Doesn't see himself coming back to boxing. He, he hasn't doesn't. announced. He's retired, but yeah. The last fight was terrible. It was, yeah. And his fight against Canelo was kind of terrible. That was my first time ever seeing him fight. Terrible. I wouldn't want to see him. You got to go back and watch his fights younger. Like the Danny Jacobs fight, great fight to watch. That's a great fight to watch his Danny Jacobs because a lot of people said he might have lost that fight. I thought it was a hell of a fight. I favored him. Oh, you know who I was surprised by? That one, and he's still a problem at 40 years old? Laura. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He got a hell of a knockout against yeah. dude. Uh, I fucking picked him to get a ninth round TKO. He yeah. got that motherfucker in the second round. I was salty. I was like, fuck, man. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, 40 years old, he's still making his mark. Uh, let's see. Uh, of course, we talked about the fights coming up. Or actually, next week's fights. Of course, we got some really big fights next week. I don't know why they would put uh, Jessica Moscow on next week uh, when Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia are going to be fighting. Unless that's over in the UK, you do got the uh, women's uh, fight, Jessica Moscow versus Ivana Abazin. And then, of course, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. Much anticipated anticipated fight. Uh, without going too much into that Ryan-Devin fight, before we even get into that next week, what's your thoughts? Going in right now, if you if this fight happened tomorrow, who you taking? Devin or Ryan and why? I'm taking Devin. Just because I see him getting getting um seem like he getting stronger, he getting better. He taking this he he in that gym working. Like he be right back to work. Like I think he might take like a week off. Like he be right back to it. Like I just see his dedication and what he trying to be. He trying to be great. You know, what I'm I don't, I don't see Ryan trying to be great. I just see Ryan saying, at the end of the day of his career, is that I try to fight or I fought all the type guys. Like you can never say I back. He gonna be one of them type people. I don't yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Even if he oh, lost every big fight yeah. out there. Type guys, you ain't win none of them damn fights. Yeah. So yep. I don't want to hear that shit. So I just think Devin H- Haney on a different level, man. Like he yeah. doing yeah. like but, not just level. He's on a he's on a different mission in life. And he know how to pick his fights, though. I feel like yep. they know how to pick they fight his fights. Like they fight the right people. Yeah. Like, uh, people, people that fight. he knows that's gonna might, might pose an issue that he can learn from. Devin, man, like I, the re- one reason, like you said, I, I favor him a lot, just not just because, uh, you know, his work ethic, his mission as a boxer, what he wants to obtain, what his overall goal is. He knows what he wants, but also his maturity. Mm-hmm. He seems very mature for a guy 24 years old. His head's on right. 
He says everything you want a guy to say. You know what I mean? And he, he lives a proper life, man. Like, he lives what he says. You know, he's not out here being a social media warrior. You know, he's not out here trying to get attention from cameras. He's just Devin Haney. And he's he's real. That's the problem I have with Ryan. Ryan's not real. Ryan's, to me, very fake as a person. And it shows in his interviews. And, and then when he gets in the ring, I just think he had, like, I mean, I've said it before, he possesses all the ability, all the talent, but his mind is going to be the biggest handicap in his whole career. Not that he never got that big right hand or knows how to set up his his mind, bro, destroys his whole career. I, I can't say his mind, bro. I think he just do that shit. Like, that might just be him. Like, that's just him. Like, how we say, like, like, I see what you're saying, though, because we can say the same thing, like, about Adrian Broner. Like, yeah, he, but that's just them. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's them. I don't think that. But, but at the same I time, think, we. I don't think that them being them and who they are is what's really got them losing. I think they just, they've been doing this shit so long that they done got to a point where it's like, fuck it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they like they on a different level now. Like we've been doing boxing now. We trying to introduce some other way to try to entertain people. I think that's yeah. what happened. and you got these guys like Devin Haney, Javante Davis. They ain't trying to do they ain't trying to do nothing to entertain different people. They just make little posters or posts, you know what I mean, when it's relevant, but they don't do stunts and shit like that to entertain the people and keep their name out there. It is it's, it's yeah. Difference, like they name is gonna speak value for itself. Not saying that Adrian and um, Ryan, they name speaks, but they want to keep their name going. Like these yeah. names gonna go even if they don't do the things they do. Like you know what I'm saying? Like we don't see Tank, you don't see Tank posting or doing little stunts. So I think it's yeah. like. It's a different, like, damn, like some people, I mean, boxing the motherfucker, man. So you might, you might be like, man, you might love it one day and hate it the next. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm speaking on that point from watching my son do it and me happen to be in the gym with him 24 7, damn near. Like, damn, gotta go to practice. Yeah. Got her with him. Like, I might as well hit the bag too. You feel me? So, yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. But, in this game, bro, you gotta stay down. You gotta stay solid. Oh, right. Yeah, I gotta be on that. Like, what is your goal? Like, do you really got a goal, or did you already meet your goal? Yeah. You get and like first you fight. And you uh, yeah, and fight. and I get that because that's Devin, Devin, and Tank. Like you said, that their goals are set so high that they're not. They're like we're not gonna meet that goal for years, but yeah. we know what we want to get. Yeah, Ryan and Broner. Broner felt maybe he had already gotten where he'd gotten by the Madonna fight. And I'm, I'm there. I'm already yeah. that guy. Yeah. Ryan feels the same way. I don't need boxing to make me big. Social media will make me big. Yeah. And their mindset is more being famous than being great. Right. If you could say it in that way, and that's not saying anything against Broner, who you know wanted to be great in his life, and Ryan, who probably strives to be great, but there's a difference in wanting it and doing it yeah 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 Yeah, man it's just that that won't that still won't and that won't like you gotta still that won't like you just gotta want that won't man like i want it like once you can this once you complete like all right you might be like i'm champion you might get it you might be champion i want to make this much money but after you do that what is your next height? Do you got one, or or just where you call yeah. it? Because it's more shit you could get to, Floyd. Yeah. So are you trying to be here, or are you trying to be here? Some people get a taste of something that's here that they ain't never had, that they don't even know is more to go get. Like it's way more to go get, bro. Like it's made, yeah. and it ain't even got to do with boxing. It's just way more you could get, man. A door. Yeah. Shit like that, like it's way more like I feel setting like, yourself up for life, setting your kids up. Go on box, man. You gotta stay in the boxing world. Don't nothing else matter but this boxing world. This yeah. 
this motherfucking gym. The internet don't matter. None of this shit. The trolls, none of that don't matter. I'm in this boxing. I live this boxing life, bro. I don't care about no streets. I don't care about nothing. I'm in this gym. I don't even, man, look, man, there's kids. I've seen it. They don't do, uh, man, I used to be like, man, they don't do nothing but be in a gym. They literally live in the gym, bro. They don't even probably be training. They still go to the gym. It's like if they not in the gym, they feel like they homes, like they sick. Yeah. Like, we we'll see these kids like, God damn, he, he, God damn. Like, so like that shit, you got to really, and you got to keep that. Like, cause some people do that when they was kids. All they know is the gym. Then they get a taste of the outside world and they fuck them up. You know, that's just like a version or something. Yeah. You know, Finally get a taste of it. Perfect kid in school. But after he get his first, he had sex for the first time with one girl. Yeah. So his whole hit now and getting yeah. out. Smoke you know, that first doobie, drink that first beer. Stay in that lane, man. Which is, yep. I, can't, I can't describe it because I ain't never been there. Me saying as a grown man now, though. Because they all made these steps as being young men. So me, with the man I got as a grown man, I know what I want to do. I know yeah. what I should do. But who knows? You feel me? If I touch that yeah. type of money that these guys touch or got that type of fame, you know what I mean? But, you know, I'm still, I'm yeah. you know, I'm rooting for the, I'm rooting for, God damn it, AB for sure, the problem, but. Hey, Ryan, man, the best, Ryan, the best quote. I don't feel like this gonna hurt Ryan though. All that shit he was doing, I don't feel like it's gonna hurt him. He been doing it. He he he. This what he does. Like yeah. It's just it's just that you got you ain't you ain't going against a vocal person like Devin Haney. You going against his daddy. So that's what make it look even more like you know what I mean. Because his daddy got a mouth on him. He he talked that. Shit. He used to be a little bit quieter. Shit. Now now he kind of speaks up more than what I. What he used to, I felt like he used oh, to kind Devin? of, yeah, uh, not Devin's, but Devin's dad kind of. He he speaks oh. more, he speaks up more than what he used to. Like he tried yeah. to be Muhammad Ali at that presser, he, that he, lame answer. He's <laughs> now, he yeah, shit for sure. Yeah, yeah, he's been uh, pretty active with that shit, man. Hey, uh, before we go, man, I want to do a, a special uh, post on the show. That noise. Man. Hi, bro, it's me, Tyson Fury. Join us May 18th for a heavyweight unification fight, mate. Fuck off. <laughs> Funny <as hell. laughs> uh, hey, you guys heard it from Tyson himself, man. Join that fight on May 18th, baby. Uh, yeah, I ain't got much else to talk about myself, man. Uh, we hit on everything this week, man. I love what you had to say about that Ryan fight. You kind of put that in perspective of the mentality that people have, man, and the different mindsets and then the different levels and, you know, the, the discipline that some people have compared to others. And that's not taken away from what anybody does. It's just different mindsets, man. You summed that up perfectly. That was beautiful. How you said that a uh, great way to end the show really. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, as always, man, how we do it, you're joining the chef, Jeff baby and our dude. Big spade. No, and cool. you know how to do it. That's it. Uh, take us out, big dog. Tell them what they need to do. And look, man, y'all need to like, subscribe, hit that click, comment, do all the good things, man. You know what I'm saying? Keep us going. Make us go up, man. As y'all, we go up, man. Y'all right with us, man. You know That's it. That's it, man. That's Leave us some that, comments that, and shit, man. We would like to reply back to y'all comments on the next show. See what y'all think or y'all got anything y'all want us to talk about. We reach out on that topic, man. Just, you know what I mean? Support us, man. That's yep. how and uh, definitely comment if you are hip to what we talked about earlier in the show about, you know, why fighters do fight at a certain weight, but they walk around at a weight, man. Comment and let it hip us more to what, what that's about, man. Because we're literally, like, we, we really want to know genuinely why fighters do that, man. That is a good-ass question from my dude, Spade. And now it's piqued my interest on why do fighters do that. But if you know the answer to that, man, definitely comment below. But like my guy said, man, like, share, check us out on Spotify. You can check us out on uh, – I now got us on uh, – damn, I can't remember the fucking name. <laughs> I'll, I'll remember it next time. <laughs> yes. 
we on there too. Uh, subscribe with your email, and then I'll send it out. Uh, Substack, Substack, that's what it is. We're on Substack now. Uh, we're also on Amazon. Of course, you catch us on YouTube. All that cool ass shit, man. And once again, this is episode 57 on YouTube and then episode 27 of the podcast, guys. Thank you for joining us as always, man. Uh, we took a week off, but hey, we're back and we're just going to keep rolling because boxing's not, it's just going to get better next week. Big fight this week, big fight next week. And it's just going to keep going from there, man. It's going to take us all the way to July. Uh, definitely plenty to talk about with us, guys. Keep joining us for your one stop shop, baby. One-stop shop right here on Bourbon and Boxing. Peace out.